Good morning, everybody. Dar Sizzle and Puddin. We are Fish a Couple down here in South Florida, and today we are out of Stewart, Florida. We are on board Daymaker Charters with Captain Pat, and we're fishing with Nate and Davis from Shark Bands Fishing, and we're going on a deep sea fishing adventure today. It's a little on the rainy side, so we all got our coats on this morning, but it's supposed to clear up and be beautiful. Yeah, they, and they have a product, and uh, we did this video a little bit before, and they have a product that repels sharks. Yes. And so. Darcy's gonna be building up some big monsters today and uh, we're gonna see how it works and we're just gonna have a great time. Show you guys uh, all the tips and tricks and gear we're using. Exactly, and hopefully get some awesome underwater footage as well to share with you. Yeah, all right, let's get moving. This is the boat just started, <laughs> let's roll out the dock. Crack the mouth for me. <laughs> All right, guys, so we have arrived at the fishing, the bait spot this morning. You can see all the baits around here. This is the way we do it in South Florida, especially in the summer months. We got two sabikis going. We got sending a big sabiki straight down, and we got a pile of threadfin herrings right under the boat. Just put your sabiki down and instantly hook up right now. It's just the summer months. We got plenty of bait, so we're going to load up real quick and then head to the fishing grounds. All right, guys, we have arrived at the first fishing location. We are actually going to fish a wreck right now. Just throughout my live threadfin herring, we caught on the sabikis this morning and straight to the bottom. Nice controlled fall. And we're gonna see what we can hook into this morning. But again, we're fishing with the shark bands device. So as soon as we hook a fish, we're gonna deploy that onto one of our rods and then hopefully review that footage and hopefully get a fish successfully to the boat in one piece. That is the goal here at this spot. Not sure what, the, I guess it's swimming up. That was weird. It's not very big. All right, I am hooked up. Fish is waking up as I reel it up to the surface. Should I get over there? Yeah. All right. The sharks, I see them. All right. Big shark down there. Cobia, cobia, cobia. All right. Nice, cobia. It's exactly what was happening the whole time. All right, watch out. I'm gonna try to... Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch out. Perfect. Perfect. That is awesome. First hook up, first fish in the boat. Came out. It, all right, looks like it's gonna be a nice keeper cobia, and that's what happened. I hooked him instantly, I guess, on the drop, and then he was swimming up the whole time, and it didn't get tight for a while there, but he's in the boat, so that's what matters. And I definitely saw sharks. Nice. All right, got another cobia in the boat. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, we just been going spot to spot. Checking different spots and catching some fish. It's been great. Yeah, two cobia. Yeah, now we'll put the information on how to find the uh, the zeppelin and from Shark Bands Fishing down in the description below, of course. But it's basically a magnet, right, Dar Sizzle? Yes. And it puts out like a, I guess an electromagnetic whatever field, yeah. field. And you can see Captain Pat. He has it on a carabiner or like a clip. And when someone gets a fish, you throw it on the line and it exactly. goes down. And and the way you set it up and the way you deploy it is the the magnet, the zeppelin, has to hang below the fish, hopefully like three feet. So you're gonna measure your leader, maybe you're gonna catch a three foot fish, and then so if you have a 10 foot leader plus three foot fish is 13 feet, and then you can have your zeppelin three feet below that. So then in that case, you'd have it on a 16 foot deployment line. Right, based on the example of the 10 foot leader. Yes. And then when the sharks come up, they get deterred or repelled, and they just, and hopefully, and they swim away. Pretty and, awesome device, and it took them two years of product development. Yeah, sorry about that radio. Yeah, so this is our second day using it, and we haven't had any sharks kill, kill any fish yet. And actually, Captain Pat, he's been experimenting with this thing for, and came up with this, how you set it up method, for like months with these guys, and, and he really believes in it. And I texted him, and he told me, you know, out of the public eye and everything, that he likes it and it works, so yeah. you guys are gonna wanna check it out. Yeah. Oof. They they said it's like, like if someone's trying to lighten your eye, you know, a flashlight, you wouldn't like that, and you'd throw it the other way. That's it. Can you catch it as a fish or Freaking what? Freaking out right now. Yeah, we'll see. I can feel the bait. 
All right, guys, we are hooked up. Been moving from spot to spot today. We got the conditions with a little bit of a light current today. So we're just moving from spot to spot, trying to find some fish that are biting. And sure enough, hooked up on the bottom instantly as soon as that thread fin herring got down there. Feels like a nice fish, but we're using 80 pound leaders today. A big nine knot J hook and hooking into some monsters. Fish is coming up. Captain Pat put the Zeppelin on. So far, so good. Snap a snap a snap. It's like an AJ. No, it's a big red. Oh my goodness. Biggest red I've caught here. Beauty. These fish are delicious to eat. Unfortunately, he's not in season. We have to release him. But beautiful American red snapper, like I said. What's that? And that's his stomach blown up, coming through different atmospheres, reeling them up real fast. That's what happens when the fish get under pressure and again, just getting reeled up through different atmospheres. So we'll vent him and let him go. Beauty. There he goes. Nice. There he goes. There he goes. He's there. He's there. Nice. Oop, dope. We'll get him up. Dude, so that's got a nice fish. Almaco. No, a rudder fish. Oh, get, hold that little leader. Oh, you got it? It's a rudder fish. Uh. We got your sashimi. All right, and another species in the boat. We got a rudder fish, which are excellent eating. They're around this time of the year. There he is. That's about the size that they get. Really excellent eating as long as you bleed them. But the guys, Nate and Davis, actually like these guys' sashimi. So perfect. Nice. Yeah, I don't know if you guys keep these enough, but the great sushi and sashimi fish. So don't lose those. Yeah. Right, Nathan? The best. The best, <laughs> he said. The best, but close to the best. <laughs> <laughs> the best we have today so far. All right, guys, at the next spot, here we go. I'm going to drop right down. I've got that live thread fin herring. That's how I have them rigged through the nose. And that is the big 9 aught J hook we are using tied with the uni knot to our leader. We have about a 10 foot leader. This is 80 pound mono. And then the leader, again, goes to the end of, a, we got another uni knot here. And then we've got a uh, double swivel system here, as you can see. This goes to my weight, which my weight is right here, interchangeable based on the current you're fishing. And then that's my main line. And I'm sorry, that's my leader. And then on this hand with the blue line, that's blue braid that goes into my reel, that's a 100 pound main line, the braid is, 100 pound braid. And then, you can see right here, we've got our camera we're using today with the Zeppelin and the shark bands uh, in order to film you know, the sharks below the Zeppelin when we're actively using it. So we don't have the magnet on there yet because once we hook a fish, then we send it down. Uh, so that's the camera system we're using. And then you can see here, my combo today is a pen torque. Captain Pat Price is sponsored by Pen, so we're using all pen products, but pen torque, love it two speed on it and then we're using a Penn International uh, boat rod, stand up boat rod, 50 to 80 pound and that's how we are fishing today. So we're going to send it to the bottom, nice and controlled fall and then once we hit the bottom we're going to lock it up into full strike and then hold on. <laughs> oh my god, 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 jeez, that's insane. Ooh. The power of that fish initially. I lost him. What? No, I didn't. Sorry. I just went slack it in like that. Color. No. Cooper. That's a big grouper, bro. Dude, I told you that was no mutton. That thing dove right back into the structure and I, you, you saw the rod. I almost like went overboard with that thing. That would have been my PB's grouper right there. Yep. All right, guys, so we deployed the shark magnet. There's the problem, look. Look. No. That's why. 
It's on the fish. See, now the Zeppelin needs to be three feet below the fish. So if that fish is another two or three feet, wow. this needs to be three feet below the tail. So we didn't have a long enough line on that Zeppelin. Wow. All right, first fish we've lost in, oh, in two days. First fish. We know exactly why we, we lost it. We know there's sharks there now, too. Yeah. Right, so no sharks right. here. So that's why we're out here, guys, doing research with shark bands and uh, to figure out how to deploy these correctly so you guys can catch your fish. All right, guys, so another fellow on a boat just got that red snapper, same exact spot. Five seconds later, we made sure that the, the Zeppelin was hanging down below the fish the proper amount. So, uh, you know, that one came up no problem. And you guys know, down here in South Florida, one shark, one fish gets sharked. Well, <laughs> all the rest are getting sharked too. Yep. So we're going to count that one as a couple of adjustments and a, and a big win for the shark pants fishing Zeppelin. Yes. All right, another nice job. We got that fish up easy. Nice red snapper. Yes. And like we said, like we just fished a spot where that huge grouper got sharked. And so far, the last two fish have come up in whole condition. So. Right. Hooked up. What do we got? What do we got? Captain Pat hand lining the rest. What a giant snapper. <laughs> Holy cow. That is my biggest American red snapper on the Atlantic side. Holy cow. All right, so check that out, guys. Captain Pat laid out the whole leader. He has the, the camera up there all the way to the leader. You can see the fish, and then you can see where the Zeppelin is placed perfectly about two feet behind the tail of the fish. And that's where it needs to be in order to protect the fish from the sharks and repel them. So now we're curious to see if we got any footage of sharks on the camera we connected so we could see, so we could do the research on the Zeppelin. Nice, what a stud. That would have been sharked in two seconds. You guys saw that grouper that was sharked. They would eat that in two seconds. That is a beast. All right guys, back at the house. And it's time to fillet one of the cobia that I caught. Asked Captain Pat if we could take one, or actually the shark fan guys, and they said, sure, why not? And you guys don't see us catch a ton of keeper cobia, at least not in the last couple years. So it's nice to have a beautiful cobia. Thanks to Captain Pat for putting me on, I think it was the first fish of the day. Man, all the days are running together these days. It's summertime, so we're just taking advantage of the outdoors and the ocean as much as possible. Okay, so we're just gonna dive right into this. He's awkward shaped because he's not like a snapper or normal fish, so he just has a really big weird head. Um, and I could cut out his head and knock it out and get it out of the way. Uh, but I'm not gonna do that just because he's a little bit on the smaller side. You know, he is a keeper cobia, but he's still, you know, not a huge cobia. If he was, I'd probably go ahead and just try to cut the head off so it was more manageable. Uh, but in this case, we're just gonna go up. As you see, we angled up into the head and you can see right here, and this head part that it's very hard and then it goes soft to where the meat is. And I'm kind of going to be working like straight up and down for the moment um, as I get this fillet laid out. And those are those crazy bones we talk about all the time that you don't want to get in your body. They're not very big on this guy, but the bigger the cobia, the bigger those crazy spines are. And those are just super, super dangerous. And I do want to mention uh, the video recently, I'm sure a lot of you guys saw it or did comment on it, how we lost that keeper cobia at the boat because of the whole net situation. And you guys said how I threw a fissy, fissy fit and I threw my rod and all this stuff. And like, listen, like I'm a passionate angler out there on the water and I'm, you know, I got over it, but in the heat of the moment, I just get passionate and I was frustrated that we lost the fish. It wasn't Brian's fault or anything. He actually wanted to gaff the fish and I just said net it. So it was kind of totally my fault on that. We should have gaffed it because he was right. It was a keeper. Um, but yeah, I mean, of course I'm, you know, blessed to be living my dream and, you know, I'm allowed to have emotions out there. So I apologize, but again, I'm just a very passionate, passionate person when it comes to fishing and I love fishing. And after we lost that fish, it wasn't the end of the world and Brian wasn't in trouble. So it was no big deal, but you guys acted like it was like some serious thing and it just wasn't. Brian even throws his rods and nobody says anything about him throwing rods when he has a hissy fit. Just saying. <laughs> You had a pretty big hissy fit in shore earlier this winter. You remember that? Brian's behind the camera. He's not going to say anything. Yes. We actually even named the title of the video like Fisherman Has a Hissy Fit. All right. So we're knocking off this side. As you can see, super sharp knife getting the job done. And just laying out that filet. Look at that filet. Beautiful. There we go. Cut you that fin by accident. There we go. 
That is a cobia filet if I did see one. There we go, we got all the meat off, even though that was kind of awkward dealing like that, but we got it all. Now I guess work on the other side and get the rest off. We'll push him to the side. He just looks like a small shark. Look at that cobia meat, looks beautiful. So excited to have cobia. I know a lot of people's favorite fish is cobia. Uh, for some reason, it just it really attracts people. It's great on the grill, great blackened, just removing some of this stomach stuff, stomach lining. And then I probably just end up cutting this guy into quarters and working it down, but we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna start the tail section and we're just gonna go ahead and skin it. Did you want me to skin it, Brian, for cooking? Okay. I wasn't sure if we were gonna cook it with the skin on half shell or skin off. Now you do definitely wanna stay up a little bit because they do have a red bloodline right along their skin here, which I do remember from catching and flaying cobia in the past. So just wanna take your time with it. Very thick skin as well. And I already started cutting through it a little bit, but no big deal. Probably stop right there and then we'll take this big beautiful slab off. You can see how I kept the, the knife up. And of course, it's got a red bloodline across the whole entire piece of skin. So if you keep it up, you'll keep most of it on the skin of the fish instead of on your meat. And then I'm just like any other fish, I'm just gonna outline this red bloodline. We're gonna knock it out and we're gonna have some awesome cobia loins, just like that. And then of course, up here in the head, we'll have all the pin bones and stuff to remove as well. Actually, it's a pretty big bloodline. All right, there we go. Two delicious slabs of cobia right there. I'm gonna put these in a bag right away. And then I'm gonna finish up the other side of this fish right here. We'll finish up what I got in front of me and just break it into sections just like you saw. Cut a little bit away, cut it off, uh, trim it up, put it in the bag, and then so on and so forth. So I'm probably gonna finish this guy maybe one and two pieces. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'm very, very, like I said, excited to have some cobia today. And if you guys are interested in the knives you've seen right now, I'm gonna link them down in the description below. You can use my promo code to save 15% off plus free shipping on these really awesome, affordable knives. All right, guys, so I'm gonna finish this up and then we'll meet you in the kitchen for the cooking with pudding portion of this video. What's up, guys? And thanks you so much to Sizzle again for cleaning up that cobia. Another great job by you with those Smith knives. And welcome guys to another edition of Cooking with Putin. Got a dub in my audio edition. Editing the video today, the audio on the first segment, totally crap. So here I am. So, but basically we decided today guys to do, I decided to do Cobia. Actually Captain Pat's idea was Cobia skewers on the barbecue. So we're doing bacon wrapped chunks. You gotta make the chunks nice and even so they all cook the same. Wrap them in bacon pineapple wedges. You can also uh, soak these or marinate these in Italian dressing or anything you want. Basically just put them all together and then you put them on the grill. Very super simple. And I'm gonna see right at the grill right now. Let's go. All right guys, welcome to the barbecue. As we said in the last video, this barbecue is not that prime, but it works great. Anyway, we're just gonna put these right on there. Oh, they're big. All right. Nice. All right, those should take about three or four minutes on each side. I'll see you in three or four minutes. Oh, Ooh, all right, guys, these look done. These look done. All right, I'm gonna put on a plate. I'm gonna bring them in for the sizzle taste test. Oh, just fell on the table. <laughs> As he walked up. What did? <laughs> Part of my food? Ah! Toby on the table. There you go. Mmm, yummy, yummy. He always says it's a sizzle taste test. He's like, but his taste test too. It started, no, I already ate it like 10 times already. Already? Jeez. Now I gotta give credit where credit's due. Thank you. We got this recipe, well, the basics of it, from Captain Pat Price at Daymaker Charters. He's in this video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's in the video. You saw him. And uh, I don't know what I asked him, but he's like, Oh yeah, you know, barbecue, bacon, and, and uh... Yeah, and uh, Nate and Davis, they're really into sashimi, particularly like the rudder fish, and then we got into talking about cobia and how cobia is great sashimi as well. But we decided to do the barbecue style. I don't know why I'm having my first bite of pineapple. Because you love pineapple. Did you guys see all my pineapple plants, by the way? I wasn't wearing a mic at the time there, but uh, I got a pineapple farm going on outside. <laughs> 
And two of the plants are now flowering or blooming, making fruit, which is really cool. And it takes about a year and a half, two years for one of those plants to make a single fruit. And then it dies, if you didn't know that. Are you gonna eat my food? I am, sorry it's hot. But the pineapple homegrown is always better, of course. Let me talk about Kobe is obviously it's white, you've seen it. It's got a little bit firmer fish than some other fish, so I always say no, don't overcook fish, but you can't overcook Kobe, it's gonna come out like leather. Mm -hmm. It's a little denser. Yes. Isn't it like Wahoo dense too? Wahoo is denser as well. Right. Some so of like, these fish, that's why they make good sushi. Right. Which is why I guess it's great sashimi as well. Yeah. But it's totally excellent. And Brian's right. The bacon did add a lot of flavor to the meat. I was like, aren't you going to season that? And he said no. So no, it's gonna, totally fine. I put no have, seasoning on it. I'm going to bite all three. Hold on. Oh, that's a bad, because the, the pineapple is sweet. The bacon is bacon. And then we got some fish. Whoa, dude. How easy was that, guys? Chewing with my mouth open, I mean, eating with my mouth, talking with my mouth open, apologize. Um, yeah, as my dad would say, you sound like a pig stuck in the mud, don't do that. But yeah, that is really good. The charred pineapple, the flavor of the grill, the combination of the three are the bomb. We need to do that more often. So quick and easy, I don't know why we don't, but we need to, for sure. That was the bomb. And as Darcy would say, it pairs excellently with a nice beach lager. style lager. There you go. All right. Yummy. It doesn't get much better. Anything else to our sizzle? Uh, that's about it. Um, anything we talked about, of course, down in the description box below. Oh. Check it out. I'd like to mention, don't forget Dar Sizzle's jewelry and everything on her website. Yes. We're having some new exciting products dropping real soon. But in the meantime, there's plenty of other products for you guys to check out there. But we're not going to go into it right now. <laughs> but um, thank you guys for supporting us and our small business. Thank you so much for watching our videos. We love each and every one of you. And just drop us a like or a comment if you love if you'd like to. We read all the comments. So um, until our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and keep, and keep on, on catching. catching. It really is delicious though. I mean not kidding.